Oh, you can't see this yet. You gotta watch the rest of the video. Welcome back to Hack a Week. Yes, indeed, it is good to be back. A year and a half since I've done a video. Wow. Well, we're back. We moved into a new house. We're living in Asheville, North Carolina now. Got a rain barrel out here that came with the house and it fills up and then it runs over all over the place. And it was down low and it was kind of hard to get a hose onto the hose outlet. So I want to do some modifications on it. I've got it all leveled out here. And right now it's just set up to accept water, but there is a place here where it can go into the ground through a pipe, drain out the back of the property. Wouldn't it be cool to put a flapper valve on there and a float mechanism, and some levers, so that when the thing fills up, flips the lever and a flap, and then it goes down into the pipe. Ah, brilliant. So, how are we gonna do that? Got an idea. Toilet parts. Yes, that's right, toilet parts. This is a float from a fill valve for um, an older style toilet. These are not used that much anymore. Now it's just the kind that's a little round floaty thing comes up all in one unit. Don't have this to mess with anymore, but these are super handy because they're nice float mechanisms that can be had for like less than 10 bucks for the rod and the float. So I wanna put that in here. Uh, I, can, I can gain access through the little screen. Put it in here where it can rise up. Then it's gonna be some levers and levers and things to uh, go over to here and operate the valve. That's the second part of the project. First part of the project is to create this flap valve in here. So let's take a closer look at what's going on. All right, here's what we've got to work with. I've got a piece of this down pipe that I can put into the hole down there. It looks like it'll be about the right size. I've got enough overlap here. So I think where the flap is going to be is in this upper section of this piece can build it into here and then we can just join it into here so what will happen in here is there's a flap right here and it will stop the water from going down through here and divert it to here as the float rises up we have to have a rod coming out of the side a lever up here so that through the motion of this we can transmit that motion to that then it runs straight down so how do we do all that? Well, we're going to kind of sketch up something here. I'm thinking of having the float come out of a hole right about here. The closer, the better. And as it comes up, it's going to have to push on something. And the motion that it can do would be like this, right? We need to translate that motion to this. So how do we do that? Well, let's see if we have this. It could come out with a lever like this. And let's see, as it hits that, let's say my thumb is the flap back like this. So as the float comes up, of course, it's got a pivot point right here. It's going to push down on it. So we could do something like that. Just do like a little forking type mechanism because it's going to change its positions. Vertex, is that what that's called? Where two things intersect anyway? Uh, it's going to change where that is. So I'll have to have something that's like this and it can move with the leverage as it happens. So now what? Now let's make a flap in here on the workbench. I marked on here where the intersection was between that elbow and this piece. It's right about there. The flap will be here pivoting on a point like roughly there. So I need to Let's take a look at that measurement versus this. It's definitely going to be longer. So it's like eh, about like 11 cm. So a little taller. That's good. So where it is now is not so bad. That angle. Um, I'm just going to strike a line there to give me a point of reference. Let's say right there. That's where I want it. So. The pivot point will be right about here. There's a flat section of this, so I probably want to stay in the middle of that. So we need to just punch a hole there. Let's measure from the end down to, let's see, let's just make it an even 100 millimeters. And right in the center of this flat section, I'm going to use my push punch. 
love those things. Same thing on the other side. Peter's there. Bang. Got my pivot point established. Okay, over to the raw materials area, and let's see what we've got for some pieces of steel rod that can pivot. Um, yeah, this is the new raw materials and welding area, by the way, in the shop. Looking back over there at the workbench I was just on, and there's the old hack -a week bench, still intact. There's way cooler other stuff done at that end, too, but we'll get into that in other videos. Oh, yeah, the machine equipment is here. Forgot about that too. Anyway, back to the raw materials pile. Uh, okay, it's copper, it's brass. It's brass. I'm looking for steel. Oh, 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 oh. Quarter inch, quarter piece of quarter inch. Perfect. Let's see, scrap metal. Mm, no, it's a little bitty stuff. Some sheet metal, sheet metal, sheet metal. Ah, motorcycle parts. Uh, tools and stuff. This is all of the stuff that we use to do uh, metal sculpting out of too, but there's always cool salvageable stuff. Miscellaneous. Big old spatula would be cool. I could just cut the end off from it. Lots of sheet metal up there. Mm -hmm. Something flat. That's flat. <laughs> Napkin holder. Ooh, that piece right there. That piece, it, it might already actually be the right width. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's see what we got here. This looks like it would just maybe pop out at the right angle. Yeah. Neat spring. <laughs> it's kind of a fun mechanism, huh? Out of the stupid napkin dispenser make bouncy feet anyway that's not what we're doing we want this piece Aha. so let's see are they made for each other is it a match made in heaven which way is it going to go like this that's freaking so cool it's already the perfect width just love when shit like that happens. So uh, I guess I can leave the nice little beveled bends in there. And I'll, I'll mount it right there about on that tab. I love how stuff just randomly works out sometimes. Just use the other one as a square to mark that so I can cut it. Let's see. Flap's gonna go like that. So it's just gonna set on the rod there. Yeah, and like I said, I'm gonna weld it right directly to the rod, right at that little uh, point where that tab is. Let's see, if I go ahead and pre bend it right there. There we go lap. What's next? Next, next, next is, uh, let's see, bring this back out this way. Need to put something on this end to stop it. I can weld a washer on there and then I need to put a bend in this 90 degree bend. <clears throat> I can mark right now where that is. And then that's what's going to go over and above the barrel and serve as the lever, the lever that will move the flap. Got the elbow all marked out, so let's get that cut out.
So after a bunch of cutting and fitting, we've got this pretty well worked out. It all slides in there like that. And then there's gonna be a piece of flashing, basically. I'll bend that up, but it poke inside here, bend it back flat. That'll anchor it all together in place there. And on the other end, that bent up piece right there will get flattened out which will seal this off back here. And then our flap will do the job of diverting the water. But first, the flap needs to be positioned. So I've got it assembled now, just in a basic setup. This can still move, but I've got that little bent channel that I created there to work with. And I hope what I can do is take a pair of needle nose pliers and crimp it into place. Uh, where it needs to be as far as you know the lever movement and all that and I've got to take it back up and fit it right next to the rain barrel to make sure I get that right Once I've established that then I can uh, weld this just with a little spot weld right in the middle to the rod In fact, I just had an idea. How about if I just drill a small hole in it right there? Get it where I want it and then I can mark it with uh, a sharpie. Yeah, Right, there's some shitty welding on galvanized metal I didn't bother to grind off. <laughs> anyway, it's enough, good enough, it's gonna stay. Got a flap. So now I'm gonna bend this back, put this back together, bend these two flashing pieces in place, see how this all is gonna work out. There we go, it looks pretty good. A couple of sheet metal screws holding it together and we're ready to install it. Then we gotta work out the other leverages for the float. You know, I've opted for my favorite here, Gorilla Tape, instead of screws. I can't have any screws poking through because they'll hinder the movement of the flapper. So just good old Gorilla Tape. I have a working flapper valve installed. So that's what it takes, that much movement. Okay, this has to move up and down to open and close the flap valve. It's got to move about that far. Here's my float that's going to mount here. I need a way to attach all this. So, this is kind of like prototyping in a way too. I may alter this as time goes by, but pre-drilled some holes in this. I need to mount it right about there. Just putting it up here so I can mark where to mount it. Uh, the reason for this thing is going to be Go on the back of here, give me a pivot point right here, and then I can have the uh, float popping up through here, operating a lever that comes from here up like this. So that's the idea. This thing goes like that and that and moves with this. So when the float is down, dropped down, it pushes this up, closes the valve off to full drop, diverts it into the rain barrel as the rain barrel fills up float comes up, this drops down. Okay, so for starters, we need to mount this to this, and then we're gonna come back and figure out where we're gonna put the pivot point. All right, you know, in hindsight, I can see I could have made this out of like a lot thinner material, but just working with whatever I had on hand. So bending this, now that it's already welded up, is gonna be a little tricky, but I got some tricks up my sleeve. something actually straight here that I can catch. So that's how far that's got to travel. Let's get a pivot point on there. Okay, let's see how this turned out. I think my mark was there. So when it's all the way at that extension, it lines up with the very outermost part, parallel with this upright. And the 
let's move this to the other position. That looks good. Okay, I gotta back up a little bit now. I gotta remove all of this. I gotta remove this. I gotta reach inside there and poke the float up through the hole over here and secure it somehow and then put all this stuff back together and we can move on. Could not find a steel coupler quarter 20, so took a bushing for a 5 16 tapped it out to quarter 20. Quarter 20, for those who don't know, is quarter inch diameter bolt with 20 threads per inch. I don't get to drop this. <laughs> Moves up and down pretty freely. Plenty of up and down to it. Um, that would be all the way full right there. So that's where we want it. It's perfect right there. It does the trick. Uh, so I could take this long piece of all thread out and just use a shorter bolt and put it in and bend it. Um, either way, I've got to cut it, but I'd like to keep that nice little piece of all thread. So I think I'll find a quarter 20 bolt, cut it off, and bend it at a right angle and uh, put it in here and then insert it into that. We're going to put a washer on either side. To help out with the slidey slidey thing okay moving on we have a working mechanism finally a little bit of tweaking and adjusting stuff like that i put washers on either side of this it really helped a lot with how smooth it operates now it's a smooth operator sorry about that uh so when it's uh filling up the float comes up 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 and then it's all the way full and the float is there and when the float is there the flap back here that was like this is like this so everything runs down the drain and then as we use up the rainwater and the barrel drops down every time it rains it's going to fill it because now the flap is sitting like that instead of like this it's like that so it's diverting water into the rain barrel and it's all a prototype at this point. If it works well, then, you know, I'll refine it a little more. Uh, but for now, this part is working okay. It's a little bit sketchy just because of the way it can bind. But we'll see what happens. It's not going to shoot up all at once. It's going to be in there floating and pushing and eventually do its thing. And then drop back down, hopefully on its own. We shall see. Once everything is wet and the wood is wet, of course, things are going to change. But, wow, fun. Wow, cool. Been thinking about this one for weeks. Finally decided to get it done because we've been getting some great rain for our garden. You can see a little bit of it back there. And it's nice to have it collected in the rain barrel and you can just disperse it where you want. So hopefully this uh, does the trick to keep it filled up and at the same time allow extra water to run out away from this area instead of overflowing everything and running across my driveway and all that. So uh, we'll see how it works out. Um, I can do something better than this in the future out of maybe some aluminum, possibly throw a few heim joints in there instead of this stuff. It might work way better. Got to wear these things up close now. I'm getting old. God, how long have I been on Hack a Week? 11 years? Going on 12, 12 years. I don't remember anything anymore. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching. It's good to be back. I've got this awesome shop and house and everything to work in now, and we're doing some really fun, creative stuff, moving into a time of my life when I'm going to have more time to create again, and I really look forward to that. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you know, until next time, 